Hello and welcome to the Lazy Book Club podcast, the book club for those who don't want to read or leave the house. My name is Matt Gonzalez. I'm David Cox. And I'm Josh Matheson. And this week we are looking at chapter 11 of Peter Pan, which is called Wendy's Story. Yup. So if we do a recap of last week, we kind of just had another snapshot of what it's like in the home under the ground. We had a description of the dinner of the Lost Boys with the I complain about so-and-so. And uh, oh yeah, just how Wendy thought that... I complain of you, yeah. yes. How uh, Wendy thought it was probably going to help her as a parent and it ended up completely backfiring. Yeah. We had Peter go on a little adventure to go and find out what the time was from the <laughs> crocodile. <laughs> so that's what you're doing during lockdown, just for something to do. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Oh, it was an essential journey. I'm going to go to the town square. <laughs> or I'm going to go to Greenwich yeah. and wait for the clock uh, thing to come down the ball. But the, uh, the the most ominous thing about last episode was just that every so often, Barry would just chuck in these whole... But it'll never be the same again. Or yeah. everybody's gonna die soon. Or that would seem to be the insinuation. Like also editing it, what I what I didn't realise at yeah. the time when you read it was it said very early on in the chapter that this was almost the period where they were waiting for the pirates to attack. And I was like, Oh, I completely missed that. They must just be on eggshells, like if that's if that's just the con the perennial the yeah. perennial life cycle of at some yeah, point, exactly. we're going to get invaded. So we kind of had the chapter go through and Wendy and Peter are kind of in this weird thing where they're pretending to be the parents of the Lost Boys. And then Peter decided he didn't want to be the dad anymore because that makes him seem old. And Wendy obviously has feelings for Peter, but he doesn't understand the whole thing about being romantically linked to someone. And it kind of lets slip that Tinkerbell, Wendy and Tiger Lily all have this same crush on Peter Pan. And he doesn't seem to have noticed with any of them. Putting Wendy firmly in the mum zone. <laughs> I suppose if there was a real age different, it, like in real life, you know, if you were dating someone 25 years older than you and it just, that, that could be a thing. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think it's the Ashton Kutcher Demi Moore sitch, isn't it? They were dating for a while. Yes, that is exactly what it is. Yeah. Peter Pan is just like when Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore were getting out. <laughs> no, I was, actually, I was thinking the exact same thing. Uh, Wendy's Demi Moore vibe is really <laughs> yeah. sort of just It's Wendy's out. story when she becomes G.I. Jane and she just shaves her head and goes to war or something against the pirate. <laughs> that would actually be quite a good version of Peter Pan if she, if Wendy starts out being like, oh, you're going to be our mum. And then she turns out to be this badass kung fu yeah. fighting. Yeah, like that. If it was written in the twenty first century, that's probably how it would be. Yeah, but I've got a feeling she's not even going to be Florence Nightingale. She's just going to be there going. Once upon a time, the damsel. It's yeah. always going to be the damsel. So it finished with Barry telling us that Wendy was going to tell a story, and it's a story she's obviously told before because he mentions the fact that Peter normally leaves during this story because he doesn't like listening to it. So I'm very intrigued to find out what it is about this story that Wendy tells that Peter does not like. But it also said that it not like that he chose not to, and if he had left, the mm. upcoming events may not have occurred. Yes, like, yeah, ominous, maybe ominous. the pirates might not have invaded yeah. or something like that. So we'll find out what that links to as well. So there's actually quite a lot hanging in the balance here. There's actually quite a lot to find out, and I'm just hoping that barry delivers on tying up these loose ends and actually moving this story forward rather than just giving us another snapshot of nonsense i really hope so i wouldn't hold my breath but yeah i know but maybe maybe 11 is the one yeah <laughs> we've got six chapters to wrap this up so be mad it'd be mad if it all just like happened in one chapter. i know i, I do have and a Josh feeling is there for like two and a half hours it's gonna end up being like a rescue a fight Captain Hook's come up and then flying home to London, like all in one chapter, isn't it? It's just all going to happen. That is, the just, last. that is just poor writing if that's going to happen. <laughs> come on now. The crocodile has the 11 o'clock number <laughs> in, a, in a ball gown. Oh, yes. Like, there's like a tinkling. Uh, Tinkerbell's on the piano. Do you think we like, keep really calling cool. the crocodile a he and it does quite explicitly say it is a she? So. If the crocodile does speak, that does give us some impetus. Yes. I doubt oh, I really she hope does. she doesn't speak. I want like a Lily Savage drag queen. <laughs> yeah. I get scared sometimes with you, too. I'm just like, please don't let this character speak. <laughs> 
Just a Liverpudlian <sighs> dirty drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I honestly, I don't think we're in the same, like, in terms of ludicrousness. Maybe we, we blew our load a little bit in Alice in Wonderland, but, like, there's not been anything too really, really far out. No, so it's true. We, we, do, we have to bear that in mind if like, when assigning... Yeah, just remember that in the last one we had a Spanish countess and a turtle that sang every line in the style of the blues uh, and ended every uh, sentence with da 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> so if you uh, yeah. if you if you could jump into the podcast at Peter Pan, I would highly suggest you go back and listen to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. <laughs> the absolute train wreck yeah. that is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Brilliant. <laughs> right, so we just stop talking waffle and actually start this chapter. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> what what's that <laughs> you know the reason we're here after all <laughs> right go sorry. on chapter 11 chapter 11 wendy's story listen then said wendy settling down to her story with michael at her feet and seven boys in the bed there was once a gentleman i had read that he had been a lady curly said i wish he had been a white rat said Nibs. Quiet, their mother admonished, cautioned them. There was a lady also. Oh, mummy, cried the first twin. You mean that there is a lady also, don't you? She's not dead, is she? Oh, no. I am awfully glad she isn't dead, said Tootles. Are you glad, John? Of course I am. Are you glad, Nibs? Rather. Are you glad, <laughs> twins? We are glad. Oh, I love dear. that the twins don't have names. They're just know, called first a, twin. A one entity. Yeah, I don't even think second twin has even been mentioned. I think it's just yeah, it's... first twin every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, second twin is definitely the back of the pantomime horse. Yeah. Oh, dear, sighed Wendy. A little less noise there. Peter called out, determined that she should have fair play, however beastly a story it might be in his opinion. The gentleman's name, Wendy continued, was Mr. Darling, and her name was Mrs. Darling. I knew them, John said to the... <laughs> cool story, bro. <laughs> They're your yeah. parents, John, you idiot. It's your parents. <laughs> yeah. That's such... It's not like, oh yeah, Kim Kardashian, yeah, I know her. Oh, do you know what I mean? It's like... What Idiot. a pointless brag. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she see me naked. <laughs> <laughs> I knew them, John said to annoy the others. I think I knew them, said Michael rather doubtfully. They, um, they were married, you know, explained Wendy. And what do you think they had? White rats, cried Nibs, <laughs> inspired. <laughs> <laughs> What's this new obsession with rats with him? No idea. It's awfully puzzling, said Tootles, who knew the story by heart. Quiet, Tootles. They had three descendants. What is descendants? Well, you are one, twin. <laughs> Just refer to them as twin. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear that, John? I am a descendant. Descendants are only children, said John. Oh dear, oh dear, sighed Wendy. Now, these three children had a faithful nurse called Nana. But Mr. Darling was angry with her and chained her up in the yard. And so all the children flew away. It's an awfully good story, said Nibs. They flew away, Wendy continued, to the Neverland, where the lost children are. I just, I just thought they did, Curly broke in excitedly. I don't know how it is. I just thought they did. Oh, Wendy, cried Tootles. Was one of the lost children called Tootles? Yes, he was. I would never want to watch a film with these guys. <laughs> so you imagine. Not, not up. Like, oh, who's that? Who's that guy? Just watch and you'll find out. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's like watching a film with my wife sometimes. <laughs> I think this is why Peter doesn't like hanging around for this story because it takes forever so <laughs> yeah remember the hunk very hungry caterpillar that two minute book took 16 hours yeah <laughs> <laughs> i am in a story hurrah i am in a story nibs hush 
Now I want you to consider the feelings of the unhappy parents with all their children flown away. Ooh, they all moaned. Though they were not really considering the feelings of the unhappy parents one jot. Think of the empty beds. Ooh, it's awfully sad, the first twin said cheerfully. I don't see how it can have a happy ending, said the second twin. Do you, Nibs? I'm frightfully anxious. <laughs> if you knew how great is a mother's love, Wendy told them triumphantly, you would have no fear. She had now come to the part that Peter hated. I do like a mother's love, said Tootles, hitting Nibs with a pillow. Do you like a mother's love, Nibs? I do, just, said Nibs, hitting back. You see, Wendy said complacently, our heroine knew that the mother would always leave the window open for her children to fly back by. So they stayed away for years and had a lovely time. Did they ever go back? Let us now, said Wendy, bracing herself up for her finest effort. Take a peep into the future. And they all gave themselves the twist that makes peeps into the future easier. I wonder what that twist looks like. Is that when? Is it when you like feel like your back's a little bit? You just go. Oh yes. Uh, can you can you both please give yourself the <laughs> twist? It makes it easier for you to look oh, into the future. I thought they were talking yeah. like like a blue steel, like a. Yes, I think that's what that is. <laughs> yes. Anyone who's listening, I'd now like you to give yourselves a twist that so makes it easier to look into the future. This is making me like Wendy less. Because we said in an earlier chapter about the fact that she's not considering how her parents must feel in this time with them all missing. But hearing that paragraph, she completely understands how traumatic that would be. And she's happy to do it anyway. And she's yeah. happy to do it anyway. Yeah, because it's weird though, because that, that's kind of at odds with her other behaviour, which is, I need to make sure my brothers don't forget who our parents were, which seems like quite a responsible thing. Yeah. And that here, she's really just being quite selfish. Mm. Does she think it's like her duty or something? Like, yeah. in, like in, in the same way that some people become mothers uh, yeah. and it's almost like a life duty or something. So it's like, well, I didn't really have a choice. Mm. This dude in green pants comes out and well, I've got to go, innit? You know, it's work. But here she is recounting the, this and feels absolutely no remorse or no guilt about the situation. No. And she's using it as some kind of... Uh you know, storytelling device to keep mm. the children entertained. Maybe Barry's overarching thing is that children are sociopaths. <laughs> yes. Because every single child in this book so far has com been completely devoid of any form of empathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't really care that much about each other. No, they don't they care really about don't. other people. Really like, don't. No. Children are sociopaths. You heard it here. <laughs> <Full stop. laughs> Years have rolled by, and who is this elegant lady of uncertain age alighting at London Station? London Station isn't a station. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that but, is literally like, I imagine that in like, um, like Fast and Furious or something like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it's, it's set in London. Some and there's a fundamental like, oh, misunderstanding of British culture. Something that still infuriates me to this day, Thor 2 when Thor gets on the underground and he's like, how do I get to this place? And she's like, it's three stops. And we're like, that's impossible. Oh, yeah. You can't get there from where you are on I that I don't line. get why they don't just do it realistically. Because I know. it's obviously a lot of people that are going to... It's just a little thing. You spend all that money. I wonder if TFL were like, you can rent a station for an evening to shoot, but you can only rent this one. Yeah, maybe. And they just gave them the completely wrong colour train. But even then, as the art director on that film, you just say, OK, well, in this one carriage, we'll recover all the poles just for, you know, for accuracy. That's yeah. what I would have done. Yeah. I don't think Americans really care that much about it, though. It's, the, it's like agree. when Fergie did that song, London Bridge, and she showed Tower Bridge constantly in the video. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not London Bridge. <laughs> I I imagine London Station being right in the middle of like Parliament Square. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So like the, you see the steam train leave. The train goes into Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That'd be well cool. So just to clarify for any of our international listeners, there is no such thing as London Station. Oh, Wendy, who is she? cried Nibs, every bit as excited as if he didn't know. Can it be? Yes. No. It is. The fair Wendy. Oh. And who are the two noble, portly figures accompanying her, now grown to man's estate? Can they be John and Michael? They are! Oh! Grown to man's estate, says the kid hanging from a baby basket. <laughs> yeah. I love how they're now portly figures as well. So no, I know. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, he's, he's up till now been forced to be the baby. Literally, yeah, sitting in the bassinet. Yeah. Whatever. See, dear brothers, says Wendy, pointing upwards. There is the windowsill, standing open. Ah, uh, now we are rewarded for our sublime faith in mother's love. So up they flew to their mummy and daddy, and Penn cannot describe the happy scene over which we draw a veil. That was the story, and they were as pleased with it as the fair narrator herself. Everything just as it should be, you see. Off we skip, like the most heartless things in the world, which is what children are. See? So, yeah, heartless children. See? <laughs> yeah. Barry just slipping that in there. Children <laughs> suck. <laughs> is, he, is, he, is he putting this in, because like, there's going to be some like massacre in the next chapter? Yeah, it's gonna be like Children are heartless. Like, they're they're going to be culling everybody. People are going to be surrendering, and they're just going to be cutting their throats. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, it's finished. The battle's finished. No. <laughs> <laughs> Off we skip, like the most heartless things in the world, which is what children are, but so attractive. And we have an entirely selfish time. And then, when we have need of special attention, we nobly return for it, confident that we shall be rewarded instead of smacked. So great, indeed, was their faith in a mother's love that they felt they could not afford to be callous for a bit longer. But there was one there who knew better. And when Wendy finished, he uttered a hollow groan. What is it, Peter? She cried, running to him, thinking he was ill. She felt him solicitously, lower down than his chest. Oh my gosh. Lower this down. This turned into chest. an erotic novel. I'm in Peter Pan <laughs> Where is it, Peter? It isn't that kind of pain, Peter replied darkly. Then what kind is it? Wendy, you are wrong about mothers. They all gathered round him in a fright. So alarming was his agitation. And with a fine candour, he told them what he had hitherto concealed. Long ago, he said, I thought like you that my mother would always keep the window open for me. So I stayed away for moons and moons and moons and then flew back. But the window was barred for mother had forgotten all about me and there was another little boy sleeping in my bed. I'm not sure that this was true but Peter thought it was true and it scared him. Are you sure that mothers are like that? Yes. So this was the truth about mothers. The toads. <laughs> <laughs> is that Jay and Barry getting something off his chest? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got mother issues. Yeah, so he's like he's he's throwing children under the bus. He's throwing mums. I'm waiting for dads, or, or probably <laughs> because dads are patriarchs. They're perfect. Well, I mean, Mr. Darling won't exactly. I was going to say yeah. the way he's painted Mr. Darling. I, I think we've done a slight on fathers. As yeah, well. it's true. Basically, everybody. Maybe sucks. that's the moral of the story. Everyone's yeah. Everything <laughs> Everyone died because they were all selfish. Oh, it's a story for our time. Everything yeah. sucks. <laughs> I thought that Peter um, Pan's problem with the story was going to be the fact that she talks about the fact they're going to eventually leave. I didn't think that his problem with it was going to be that she thinks the mum's still leaving the window open. Well, yeah, no, but apparently Peter's got trouble past mummy issues. Yeah, yeah, clearly. If in doubt, if you go to Neverland, bring a spare key. Because <laughs> then you don't, then you don't need the window to be open. It's true. Very true. Just like you just knock. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Oh, you're there. Cool. Yeah. What's for tea? <laughs> unless, unless, they, unless they move house, which would really suck. That really would. Mm. Yeah. Still, it is best to be careful, 
and no one knows so quickly as a child when he should give in. Wendy, let us go home, cried John and Michael together. Yes, she said, clutching them. Not tonight, asked the lost boys, bewildered. They knew in what they called their hearts that one can get on quite well without a mother and that it is only the mothers who think you can't. At once, Wendy replied resolutely, for the horrible thought had come to her. Perhaps mother is in half mourning by this time. Oh, this she's red. finally realised. Goodness gracious me, go cool she is. <laughs> this dread made her forgetful of what must be Peter's feelings. And she said to him rather sharply, Peter, will you make the necessary arrangements? If you wish it, he replied, as coolly as if she had asked him to pass the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> not so much as a sorry to lose you between them. If she did not mind the parting, he was going to show her, was Peter, that neither did he. But of course he cared very much and he was so full of wrath against grown-ups who, as usual, were spoiling everything, that as soon as he got inside his tree, he breathed intentionally quick short breaths at a rate of five to a second. He did this because there is a saying in the Neverland that every time you breathe, a grown-up dies. <laughs> <Just get that. laughs> it's like a machine gun. It's like, you know. Killing all the grown-ups. We thought that every time a child says I don't believe in fairies, a fairy dog was bad enough. I know. But every time you breathe, and he's just basically gone on a mass murder spree. He really has, yeah. <laughs> and Peter was killing them off vindictively as fast as possible. <laughs> Everyone he knows. I love the fact that... Like, but then if you didn't want to do it, you'd be like... <gasps> you'd be like... Yeah, trying to hold your breath as much as possible. <laughs> You breathe out after a minute and just cry. And then you go, <laughs> yeah. And then you realise that your sobs are making it worse. That's so word. Yeah. Oh, my word. That's so much stress and pressure to live with. Yeah, it is. I know. I love that we're not hearing about this until chapter 11 as well. I wonder how many grown-ups have died in the last 11 chapters <laughs> from them breathing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> then, having given the necessary instructions to the Redskins, he returned to the home where an unworthy scene had been enacted in his absence. Panic-stricken at the thought of losing Wendy, the lost boys had advanced upon her threateningly. It will be worse than before she came, they cried. We shan't let her go. Let's keep her prisoner. I <laughs> chain her up. In her extremity, an instinct told her which of them to turn. Tootles, she cried. I appeal to you. Was it not strange she appealed to Tootles, quite the silliest one? Grandly, however, did Tootles respond. For that one moment he dropped his silliness and spoke with dignity. I am just Tootles, he said, and nobody minds me. But the first who does not behave to Wendy like an English gentleman, I will blood him severely. He drew back his hanger and for that instant his son was at noon. The others held back uneasily. Then Peter returned, and they saw at once that they would get no support from him. He would keep no girl in the Neverland against her will. Wendy, he said, striding up and down, I've asked the Redskins to guide you through the wood, as flying tires, you so. Thank you, Peter. Then, he continued, in the short, sharp voice of one accustomed to be obeyed. Tinkerbell will take you across the sea. Wake her, Nibs. Nibs had to knock twice before he got an answer, though Tink had really been sitting up in bed listening for some time. <laughs> Who are you, Dong? <laughs> How dare you, Ding? Go away, <laughs> Dong, he cried. I do enjoy the voice breaks. The dong. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's just a little bit she of my come, own She comes across uh, like a right specimen. <laughs> <laughs> we, her middle name is Dor. She's Tinker Doorbell. <laughs> you ought to get up, Tink, Nibs called, and take Wendy on a journey. Of course, Tink had been delighted to hear that Wendy was going, but she was jolly well determined not to be her courier, and she said so in still more offensive language. Then she pretended to be asleep again. She says she won't, 
Nibs exclaimed, aghast at such insubordination, whereupon Peter went sternly toward the young lady's chamber. Tink! he rapped out. If you don't get up and dress at once, I will open the curtains and then we shall all see you in your negligee. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. That escalated. Yeah. Blimey! That's not okay. That's not okay. That is not okay for a children's book. This made her leap onto the floor. Who said I wasn't getting up, dong? She cried. In the meantime, the boys were gazing very forlornly at Wendy, now equipped with John and Michael for the journey. By this time, they were dejected, not merely because they were about to lose her, but also because they felt that she was going off to something nice to which they had not been invited. Novelty was beckoning to them as usual. Crediting them with a nobler feeling, Wendy melted. Oh, dear ones, she said. If you'll all come with me, I feel almost sure I can get my father and mother to adopt you. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> Mr. Darling's already counting cauliflowers. She turns <laughs> up with like yeah. seven other kids in tow. I highly doubt that. They'll be dropped off at the orphanage. <laughs> yeah, they'll be working in the workhouse. Yeah. They will be. They will be. The invitation was meant specially for Peter, but each of the boys was thinking exclusively of himself, and at once they jumped with joy. But won't they think us rather a handful? Nibs asked in the middle of his jump. Oh no, said Wendy, rapidly thinking it out. It'll only mean having a few beds in the drawing room and they can be hidden behind the screens on the first Thursdays. I don't know what happens on the first Thursdays in their yeah. house, but the drawing room's busy, apparently. <laughs> oh, Peter, can we go? They all cried imploringly. They took it for granted that if they went, he would go also. But really, they scarcely cared. Thus, children are ever ready when novelty knocks to desert their dearest ones. All right, Peter replied with a bitter smile, and immediately they rushed to get their things. And now, Peter, Wendy said, thinking she had put everything right, I'm going to give you your medicine before you go. She loved to give them medicine, and undoubtedly gave them too much. Of course, it was only water, but it was out of a bottle, and she always shook the bottle and counted the drops. Oh, that's different. Which gave it a certain medicinal quality. I thought that she was just no, like an unregistered no, no. doctor or like a witch doctor, just kind of giving people <laughs> <Yeah>. antibiotics <laughs> when they shouldn't be having them. No, it's just British. Yeah. On this occasion, however, she did not give Peter his draft portion, but just as she had prepared it, she saw a look on his face that made her heart sink. Get your things, Peter, she cried, shaking. No, he answered, pretending indifference. I'm not going with you, Wendy. Yes, Peter. No. To show that her departure would leave him unmoved, he skipped up and down the room, playing gaily on his heartless pipes. <laughs> she had to run about after him, though it was rather undignified. To find your mother, she coaxed. Now, if Peter had ever quite had a mother, he no longer missed her. He could do very well without one. Uh, he, says the guy who just kidnapped a girl to be his mother. It sounds like don't think that's it true. sounds like he's not over it to me. <laughs> he's got some unresolved. Yes, he had thought them out and remembered only their bad points. No, no, he told Wendy decisively. Perhaps she would say I was old, and. I just want always to be a little boy and to have fun. But Peter, no. And so the others had to be told. Peter isn't coming. Peter not coming. They gazed blankly at him, their sticks over their backs, and on each stick a bundle. Their first thought was that if Peter was not going, he had probably changed his mind about letting them go. Is that actually a thing? What, this thing on a stick? Yeah. Yeah. Back. That's how did people that, used to travel back in the day. People did actually used to... Because I've only ever seen that in yeah. cartoons. I've no, never it, once a, looked well, at a, a photo of history and seen anyone walking down the road with a stick and a 
No, they did. It was like the, it was like an early. Next time we commute, we'll do it. See if it's nice. <laughs> I, like, I did it once. It could be the future. We had a we had a Victorian day at school in primary school. Right. And uh, we had to obviously research what we were going to be bringing and all this sort of stuff. And I remember my grandpa helping me out, and he was like, "Well, they would have had this, and well, they wouldn't. You couldn't have a plastic water bottle, so he gave me this like canteen freaking, thing. It, but it was like a like a uh, a clay Stone. Pl- clay pot with a cork yeah. in the top. Uh, that was like a like a flagon, and he gave me that, and I had to carry that around school all day with my water. Did you put in it. mead in it? No, I didn't put mead. Just water. <laughs> and he um and and, I, and he was like, you you only have bread and cheese for your lunch, and I was like, what? Were you like, granddad? I demand gyoza. <laughs> 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 Where are my edamame beans? <laughs> it's the bread for catcher. <laughs> we tied up my lunch, my cheese, and my, it was like a hunk of cheese, a hunk of bread in this silk handkerchief, tied it to the end of a stick, and I went to school like that. You must have looked like a right dear. I did look like a right tit. I'm not going to lie to you. Turns out it wasn't even Victorian day. <laughs> <laughs> You'd got the wrong day. No, but yeah. I, got, I got the wrong day. Nobody else went to nearly as much effort, I have to say. Their first thought was that if Peter was not going, he had probably changed his mind about letting them go. But he was far too proud for that. If you find your mothers, he said darkly, I hope you like them. He offered... <laughs> Okay, good, good. (laughs) The awful cynicism of this made an uncomfortable impression, and most of them began to look rather doubtful. After all, their faces said, were they not noodles to want to go? Now then, said Peter, no fuss, no blubbering. Goodbye, Wendy. And he held out his hand cheerily, quite as if they must really go now, for he had something important to do. She had to take his hand, and there was no indication that he would prefer a thimble. You will remember about changing your flannels, Peter, she said, lingering over him. She was always so particular about their flannels. Yes. And you will take your medicine? Yes. That seemed to be everything, and an awkward pause followed. Peter, however, was not the kind that breaks down before other people. Are you ready, Tinkerbell? he called out. Then lead the way. Tink darted up the nearest tree, but no one followed her, because it was at this moment that the pirates made their dreadful attack upon the redskins. Above, where all had been so still, the air was rent with shrieks and the clash of steel. Below, there was dead silence. Mouths opened and remained open. Wendy fell on her knees, but her arms were extended towards Peter. All arms were extended to him, as if suddenly blown in his direction. They were beseeching him mutely not to desert them. As for Peter, he seized his sword, the same he thought he had slain Barbecue with, and the lust of battle was in his eye. End of chapter. Oh, the pirates have finally Ooh. made their move. Yeah, it is about to start. I was hoping we were going to get a little bit then. It's yeah. about to go off. Yeah, hopefully. I've been missing a good Barney. I wonder if the Lost Boys and that lot are going to get involved in this, or if it's just going to be Peter Pan being again, unfortunately, the white savior of the tribe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll probably get a line from Barry like, all the Redskins were dead, but it didn't matter because Peter was still alive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though not much happened, quite a lot happened. It was like a good goodbye episode and we got a little bit of insight into Peter. And we got, I mean, in terms of character shifts, going from we're going to stay here forever and we can go home whenever to, oh my goodness, our parents probably think we're dead. We have to go right now. Yeah. That's 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 a big shift, you know, in terms of character. It only took one story to do that <laughs> yeah the, the children the children were taking the window being open as a green light of oh it's fine you just stay out as long as you want and when you're ready you can come back yeah and it's only when peter said no mums will forget about you that they've almost actually thought about the mental state of the parent mm. on the other side of the window they've mm. just looked at the window and just taken that as the sign that everything's cool but it's nice to see that um that well, well, not nice to see, but it's obvious that the honeymoon period with Neverland and the children is kind of starting to wane and come to an end. They're starting yeah. to kind of 
appreciate that oh actually no there is a real world beyond this and we should probably start considering when we sh- should go back well it also kind of goes back to something that we talked about before um about i remember i think matt you got quite annoyed that they were getting so excited about doing really mundane everyday things yeah but it, but it sort of says here that children just love novelty so anything mm. that's different they'll love yeah. regardless of what it is for a yeah. short time and so it's like yeah we, we even though they live in the most exciting place yeah ever, yeah we can like, go to the school novelty, Woo! The novelty of all of this stuff is whatever yeah. whatever is suggested as long as it's new they're yeah. gonna want to do it it's not until they do it that they realize how rubbish it is that they start to hate it exactly <laughs> i just think they're sick of eating imaginary food yes Hearing boring stories and pooing in a hole in the ground because that's you know for a fact that's what it is. If Wendy and John and Michael had turned up and I was on the Lost Boys, I'd be like pulling them off to the side and being like, "Get me the hell out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> He's a psychopath. <laughs> It'd just be those. Let's go in for a hug, and then you just go, "Help!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just slipping the distress note in their pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at lit charts. Lit charts. Yeah, has to happen. There's a couple of things uh, in regards to Peter that's quite, you know, nice to bring to the forward. Um, perhaps Peter's mother did forget him, but it's more likely that Peter stayed away for a hundred years. That it wasn't even his own family that lived there any longer. And even the idle story about a mother's love cannot do away with the future. Peter's heartbreak about mothers may really be the knowledge of endings and a refusal to accept them. So that's probably my most likely true. If there is only one clock and it's in a crocodile on an island, he probably has been away for so long that he hasn't appreciated the fact that his mum is probably long dead and gone oh, yeah 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 i love that like episode like peter band does come back and then he goes to like the west brompton cemetery and he's like oh yeah and mum's there oh. yeah and his everyone youngest know, sister everyone is was dead in her 90s or the something <laughs> yeah it's like interstellar <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but he's obviously just not computed that He's gone back thinking, oh, yeah, they should have left the window open. It's like, well, there's only so long. And as it says here, probably the family moved or died and a new family's moved in. It's not even the case they probably replaced him. It's probably a completely different family with a completely different kid. Yeah. I'd love the theory that he was like a Tudor child or even like he was around the time of like William the Conqueror or something. Mm. And like, so he, and they, they start having a, having a chat. It's like, so what do you remember about the outside world? Oh, well, you know, like all the bows and arrows. And yeah. Like the, the, you know, all, all of the, the peasants. <laughs> before, even like before um, that as well. It's like, oh, yeah, so there was this king and he had six wives. And <laughs> it's like... Yeah, you're like, what? <laughs> no, no, no. Like, we have like horses and carrots. Like, we have factories and steam engines and stuff. Where would you... Yeah. Where were you born? Uh, 985. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Leeches, <laughs> long leeches cured everything, yeah. Yeah. So good. Good theory, that. What's quite interesting as well is that when the boys and Wendy decide to leave, rather than taking quite a dictatorial kind of you're not doing that approach, Peter's actually weirdly polite about it and kind of, yeah, whatever you want, like quite nonchalant. And he's obviously upset, but rather than showing that and like laying down the law, he's kind of trying to be cool about it for some reason. Yeah, but then also some of that tactic seems to be like a way of just being passive aggressive. Like when he's yeah. like, well, yeah, no, I hope you find your mums. I hope that they, I hope you get on because, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, what if we don't? And he passively aggressively played a flute. He How did. romantic is that? <laughs> Passag he flute. He played gaily around. It's like, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm <laughs> fine. Life's never been better. Go back to your family. <laughs> this is the magical recorder of brushing my feelings under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just imagining him doing this like 80s dances feelings in a wooded glade. You know, when all those things are like in like footloose and things where it's just like a kind of dance like... my feelings out. It's like kind of like angsty, yeah. <laughs> like fighting the... Are we saying Peter Pan is Kevin Baker? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. 
So it says here, with each moment, Peter seems more and more adult. What is childlike about forced politeness? Question mark. You know, the politeness is a form of excellence, but it is an excellence very far from the impulsive self-absorption of a child. It seems at times that Peter did grow up after all, but in his own way. So he's trying to say that he's like being forced polite, being being polite in a scenario that you are not happy with is a very adult thing to do, like keeping your emotions in check and mm-hmm. being like, no, I'm going to be civil. I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm not just going to throw a tantrum and start punching the ground. But then, it's true, yeah. But so it's like, although we're complaining and say, you know, well, Peter's being passive aggressive. Being passive aggressive is actually quite a grown up way of responding to to something. Yeah, it's, it, it's the way an yeah, adult you, throws you a tantrum like, rather yeah. than a child throws a tantrum. That's I've, quite emotionally complex of him, isn't it? Yeah, because because a, a a child is never normally passive aggressive. They're just aggressive. If they're not happy, they will storm around and throw things and punch. Absolutely. Whereas being passive aggressive yeah. is like it, it's very nuanced. It takes a certain level of maturity to be passive aggressive. I was just thinking about like. Um, Inside Out, uh, yeah. and how how that's supposed to be a, supposed to be the sort of just prepubescent kind of mind yes. is, is what it's based on, um, which is definitely where Peter sits. He's at that sort of yeah. cusp. He hasn't reached adolescence, uh, and and here he is. He's not. He's he's demonstrating you know, a lot more complex emotions, and he's dealing with them in a much more complex way. Because I mean, yeah. you know, there's happiness, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. There's no like pasag in there. No, uh, that's a, that's not a that's not a character. I'm excited for where the next chapter's going. I'm hoping that we kind of go into a bit of a battle. Maybe some people get captured. Oh, I don't know. It's it's if I feel like it's finally ramping up to the good stuff that we've been waiting for. Mm. Hmm. You'd hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Kind of. I wonder if like. The tribe attack is actually just to lure Peter away mm-hmm. yeah. because they know he can't resist a good fight. And then Captain Hook sweep in and like take Wendy and John and Michael and all that lot while he's away fighting, reading into the master art of war commander that is James Hook, I reckon that. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying all this like he's a genius. His last plan was a chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> This time he's made banana bread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bananas crazy. are going off. But now they're not going to be the end of you. He's baked a cake, but this time he's going to jump out of it. I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's going to be the yeast of your worries. Oh, <laughs> it's the God. yeast of my worries. In editing these, I've noticed there is always just one, at least one terrible pun per episode from David. Yeah, yeah it's like a last week's one was only time will tell. Yeah, <laughs> which I've got to admit, I did laugh at the second time I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're laughing in the edit, then we know he's. he's done yeah, I know, but you know when I was like, yeah. you laugh and then you loathe yourself for laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to play the game of guess what the next chapter's called? Oh. Guess what the next chapter's called? That's the jingle. We get it. a point for getting one of the words correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. You can get I'm going to just throw a curveball just and think it's going to be something clever like only the brave. I think it's going to be called the attack. <laughs> He's not that the poetic. Attack. Come yeah, on, no, that's true. <laughs> Um, well, I, I guess if you're getting a point for a word, you can both have a point for the word the. <laughs> yeah. So I'm guessing, is, does the the come at the start? It does, yeah. Okay. But it's not the battle. It's, a pretty, the battle. it's a pretty straightforward chapter title. There's nothing poetic about the language. What, the, the big Uh-oh. fight? No. The pirates? No, we're thinking pre, preamble. We haven't even got to the fight yet. The chase. Not the rescue. That, it's not even that exciting. The capture. The tea break. (laughs) (laughs) The bit where they go up the stairs. The nap. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I could take the toilet break. (laughs) Yeah. Chapter 12 is called. I love how Josh is so desperate to know the chapter we keep interrupting him. (laughs) I'm trying to tell you the answer. (laughs) Trying to fill some time. Can I tell you now? Is that acceptable? (laughs) Chapter 12 is called. The children are carried off. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> another one. That so it does sound go, like they've been mm-hmm. captured then. I reckon my battle plan yeah, might, be, might be on the money. Yeah, could be. Could we'll find be. out next week. 
So if you have any insights or opinions on the chapter this week, you can message us on thelazybookclub at gmail.com. Or get involved on Twitter. Our handle is at lazybookclubpod. And on Instagram, we're exactly the same, at lazybookclubpod. Do keep the comments coming in. Do keep the posts coming in, the tweets, the fan art. We do love seeing it all and we do love hearing that People are enjoying the book and enjoying being part of this community. And we will see you next week for The Children Carried Away. No idea. You've got <laughs> no away. idea. They just get carried away. The Come children on. in carrier bags. Or <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was called that. Carry three. Carry three. <laughs> <laughs> we'll no, see seriously, you. what's it called again? We'll see you next week for chapter 12. The children are carried off. Oh, there you Bye go. Josh is now. doing my job for me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>